Agave Politics. You know, if you're just too busy doing life, you can always tune in here every Wednesday at 11 a.m. And we're going to tell you what's going on in Tampa Bay. And I'm Angela Birdsong. My co-host is Mary Jirasi. Hello, everybody. Thanks for joining us for the Jur- show. Journalist extraordinaire. Thank you. And I'm affectionately known as the Medicare lady because I help people with Medicare. And guess what? Today we have an elected official, Representative Adam Hadley, and he's up to a lot. <laughs> Hi, Gordon. Thanks for having me on the show. Well, you know what? Everybody has a unique story. So we're going to start at the beginning. As we always do. From where you were born and, you know, where you went to school. Good things like that. All right. Uh, Well, my name is Adam Hattersley. I'm the state representative for House District 59, which is uh, the Brandon, Riverview, Valrico, parts of Sefner, Dover, uh, parts of Claremel City and Progress Village. Uh, Over there, kind of the east side of Hillsborough County. You know, born in, in Boston, Massachusetts. It was okay. uh, when I was about seven years old, moved to Littleton, Colorado. I uh, grew up there mostly, went to high school there, then went to University of Michigan. Uh, I got bachelor's and master's degrees in aerospace engineering. Uh, while I was there, I was also uh, actually on the men's gymnastics team there, and we were the 1999 NCAA national champions, which was wow. pretty cool. I'm actually still an international judge, even to this day. Congratulations. Wow. That's yeah, fantastic. Yeah, and uh, right after grad school, uh, I went into the United States Navy. Went through uh, officer candidate school right here in Pensacola, Florida, and was commissioned about three weeks before September 11th. Oh, um, wow. Ouch. Yeah, then went through the, the submarine and nuclear power training pipelines uh, and spent about three years on a fast attack submarine out of Pearl Harbor. Uh, the first half of my tour was out of Pearl Harbor, and we deployed out of there. Then we spent some time in the shipyard in Bremerton, Washington, which uh, if you're in the Navy, you know, that being in the shipyard, not a lot of fun. Uh, you know, <laughs> seeing your ship all cut up in the dry dock. Ouch. Um, yeah, but then I went to be uh, an instructor, a professor at the United States Naval Academy. I taught electrical engineering. And uh, while I was there, I volunteered and went with an Army unit to Iraq for a year from 2006 to 2007. If you remember the surge from, from history class, the second half of my tour was the surge. I then came back, finished teaching at the academy, you know, got married. I got out of the Navy, moved to Australia for a year with, uh, with my wife, Christy, because, you know, why not? Australia's why not? pretty cool. <laughs> <laughs> uh, then got a job here in Tampa. No, we moved back here in 2009. I worked you got a for job a, doing what? I worked for a wholly owned subsidiary of GE. Doing a, We basically did the installation and maintenance on main power turbines all over the world. So we, we kept the lights on. Okay. So that was, There's uh, a rumor going around that you're really a rocket scientist. Uh, well, you know, technically, <laughs> uh, the aerospace engineering degrees, technically, uh, yeah, yeah, rocket scientist. It doesn't take a rocket scientist, but if thank, it does, it's all right. Thank God we need more of those in yeah. politics. Trust me, because the lot we have now... Wouldn't pass the test. Yeah, it gets a little tricky. Thank um, you. Oh, of course. And, well, well, anyway, after uh, seven years with uh, that group with GE, then uh, in 2016, my wife and I, we opened our own small business, and we were really focusing on helping other small businesses promote themselves. Then in 2018... What does your business do? Uh, so we do, like, print and, and promotional and, and marketing type, type things for small companies. This. Yeah. Okay. Uh, and then in 2018, geez, around March of 2018, we decided... Uh, based on what was going on, that it was finally time to get back into public service. And, and we ran for uh, the state house and we won in last November. And we've been up in, in Tallahassee ever well, since. Man, back that up a little bit. How did you go from rocket scientist to a candidate? <laughs> <laughs> well, it was really that, that whole, that whole trip, that whole journey. Was it that 2016 thing? Uh, that had a little bit to do with it. You know, we, we thought about running for, uh, for, for 2018, you know, right after the 2016, but initially decided not to. And then really what it came down to for the state house is uh, it was an open seat that I was running for. And there were two people on, on the Republican side. And one of them had filed uh, in March of 2018, who had been in public service before, that people were not excited to see running again. So uh, my phone started ringing off the hook, really. Um, people started started calling me, asking, would you be interested in running? And I mean, was not, one a guy named Brian Ferris? Uh, Brian Ferris did call us. Uh, Aaron Who's Abel a, uh, called political us. Political consultant, mm-hmm. Aaron Abel. She's yep. a she's an attorney by trade and a, a political activist. Yep, she's by everywhere passion. In the community. <laughs> yeah, definitely by passion. Uh, I think and in, in, uh, Andrew Learned, who ran for the congressional fifteenth last cycle, uh, and I guess we'll probably talk about what's going on with with the campaigns in a little bit. Uh, but you know, he called and some other people and. And my wife and I looked at, at what was going on and who was running in our district. And I mean, not to tell a, a family secret, but I was not even registered with, with either party uh, by the time we, we decided. Independent. Yep, I was an independent uh, you know, my whole life because really it was, 
it, it really came back to not my a time good thing to do in Florida, by the way, for those listening, because you cannot vote in the primaries. <laughs> right, because we have We're a closed, in a closed primary. State. Yeah, but uh, we just, you know, we made sure we voted in, in all the general elections. But, uh, you know, my time in the military, it didn't matter to me what, what party the guy sitting next to me in, in the Humvee in Iraq was. It was just right, that, that he was right. an American. It did, so, you know, I was just, I would vote for who I thought was the best for the job. Okay. You know, and I still do. Um, so that's that's really, we started looking at, at, at the parties. If we decided to run, it, it's always easier with a party. And, uh, you know, we looked at the value structure of each party and we figured out that the democratic side the aligned Democrats more with, with our, our values so a registered democrat <laughs> and next week registered to, to run for office and we uh, we kicked off wow and that you told me that was your 40th birthday yeah the day we decided to, to run <laughs> was my 40th birthday uh the end of march in in 2018 wow okay and then you ended up at someone special's house yeah so that day uh when when we finally decided we were also invited to uh, to go to Alex Sink's house for Sean Shaw's kickoff party for his attorney general campaign, so you know I had never even met an elected official before. You know I was just a normal, normal guy. Normal rocket yeah. scientist. Well, yeah. I, I, I think what I like best about your story is previously you weren't politically active. Uh, you didn't know who your step rep, state rep was. Um, you weren't involved, and you went from that to becoming who you are today. I mean, that's a true success story as far zero as I'm concerned. Zero to hero. Oh, thanks, yes. Yeah. Zero to hero. Yeah. I'll that's say maybe zero to 60. It. I don't know. <laughs> but yeah. um, that, that, that leaves me hopeful and I hope our audience hopeful that you don't have to have a million dollars to win. You don't have to have political uh, acumen, although whatever you know helps. You managed to parlay everything you learned into becoming who you are today yeah, as a really, politician. We, uh, we ran a campaign, a grassroots style campaign. I was out at Two, three, four events every night. You know, when you were running, Angela, we saw you. Yes, all I over was the place. a well, candidate at the I same time. Yep. We met you at Brandon. County Commission we <laughs> candidate. You, we yeah. met you at Brandon. And That's we were just, where I met you. We were out. We were visible. Uh, you know, we. I think it just really appealed to to have somebody running that did not have a political background. That was just, you know, a more normal person struggling with the same struggles that that the people of the district had you know right. and i wasn't I'm, I'm not a hyper-partisan guy i'm okay. just an, like i said i've been i was an independent most of my most of my life i'm just a just a guy you know i'm just happened to be a veteran living in the district who who was was sick of of being part of the problem so decided to be part of the solution and that's not right. standing up to do something not not voting not that's that's being part of the problem so we had to, to we step all up. do a little bit yep we got to yeah, do your the part. work is lighter and your story is so en encouraging for anybody who wants to run, what would you say to somebody out there who may be a Joe or Josephine average person that they feel about themselves? Why should I run? How can I run? Why should I get involved? Well, I was uh, maybe a little, not not going to say clumsy first getting in. I should have done a little more research, but your state reps, your, uh, your county parties, your state parties on either side are more accessible than you think. Reach out to them. Uh, we all have websites with our, our phone numbers, our office numbers, our emails. Get in touch with us. If if we get emails saying, "Hey, I'm interested in running," I haven't gotten many of those, but every single one I have, I set up a meeting and sit down with that person to talk it out. How they can that they can start, what the reality of running is, because trust me, everyone, it it is not what you think it is. It's not what it looks like on TV. What is uh, it? Tell well, us about the reality of running. We have an hour to talk. Yeah, I mean, it it turns into a full time a full time job. Even and a for, half. And yeah, and a half. As even you for know. a state house. <laughs> You know, or a county commission, most of your time is is on the phone. You know, you're calling people. You're calling people for support. You're calling people, uh, money. You know, yeah, to help contribute <laughs> to your campaign, uh, to get on podcasts and radio shows and TV shows and to set up events. It is. It's not a nine to five. It's you know a, a six a.m. to ten p.m. every single day. Uh, and it's it's just really putting yourself out there and and being being vulnerable to. To every every good, bad, and and neutral thing that could possibly be be said, real or or imagined. Uh, if you do run, quick note: turn off the notifications on your social media. <laughs> <laughs> so that being said, what is the best thing that happened to you while you were running, and the worst thing that happened to you while you were running? Wow. Uh, well, during that, we'll just leave it in the campaign. Okay. Before before the state house. Yes. Uh, Really, probably some of the worst things is, you know, we started nine points down. You know, nobody had any faith that, that we would win. So really 
being that much of an underdog, <coughs> oh, excuse me, uh, and being being told you're going to lose everywhere you go, mm. that that that's tough. You know, you, you you were running in a Republican stronghold. Is that correct? It had been Republican for uh, well over 20 years. Yeah. Um, so it, it it was it was a tough it was a tough flip. Even you know some of the bigger organizations would, and rightfully so, you know, wouldn't didn't didn't want to get involved because there were more competitive seats that needed their attention. And, and I, I completely understand that. Um, but we were able to flip, what, six or seven state state house seats. Uh, you know, some of the best things are when, when people who, who just kind of how you mentioned, people come up and said, you can just be an average person and run for these, these seats and show success. And, and when people get excited to help you with your campaign about what you're doing, it, it, it's really kind of surprising. Like the first time I was recognized uh, it just in, in a restaurant, like, hey, you're that guy running running for office. It was just like a mind blowing moment. It really was. I met you uh, fundraising in Brandon, mm-hmm. so I think you and I were there. Okay, yeah, all right. So, uh, well, we were everywhere. Yeah, we were. <laughs> <laughs> you never knew you could be three, four places in one day. Yeah, well, you <laughs> definitely. It was. It was. Yeah, you uh, have to be running. You mm-hmm. look at Facebook, and there's about 900 events, and she's out at about 899 of them. <laughs> I mean. Here I am at the Haitian Coalition and the Democratic Coalition. This is a hardworking woman. Yeah, there might have only been one or two people at more events than, than I was. And, Angela, you might have been one of them. I think you're right. We're going to be heading to a break soon. So uh, what do you want to talk about when we get back? Geez, we could do it. maybe a quick uh, wrap-up of what happened in the State House. And okay. then we can start getting in, into uh, our next campaigns, what's going on in the next session in, in Tallahassee. Sounds good. We got stuff to talk about. We always do. It's an hour-long show. <laughs> We're just waiting for a little music here, Steven. <laughs> Don't make me sing. It's ugly. <laughs> well, you sing. You're a singer. Yeah, I'm a singer. There we go. All right. There we go. I jumped the gun a little bit. Jr., your motivational guru. This is the DLD Motivational Moment. You got up this morning. You got up this morning. Eyes sneaking open as the feet hit the floor. Got to thank God for the rise this day. The stove perking the smell of nutrition. Get to your destination with planned unselfish acts. Bulletin board read, do you have any to spare? Happiness and understanding. We all have experienced that one phone call. Family member, co-worker, friend has passed on. We don't know our last evening or morning. Get up. Help someone out. Now walk it out. You got up this morning. This has been the DLD Motivational Moment. You can reach out to DLD at DLD28002 at yahoo.com or 813-394-5875. Been in a car crash? Call Ricky. Don't know what to do? Ask Ricky. We will connect you with a lawyer and doctor experience in auto accident injuries. Call Ricky at 844-361-7425. After an auto accident, you have 14 days to seek medical attention. You may be in pain. So call Ricky. Ask Ricky for your best options. 844-361-7425. Call Ricky. Ask Ricky is a legal and medical referral service. The lawyers in our network pay to receive referrals. When it comes to reality radio, everyone is a star. I know that's right. On your smooth soul and R&B station. On the World Wide Web. Access Access granted. granted. In Touch Radio. All right, we're back for another session of Tampa Bay Politics. And you know what? We want to hear what happened in Tallahassee. Can you give us a little wrap up? Sure. There's a... You know some good stuff, some some not so so good stuff. Some not so good. <laughs> some not so stuff. good stuff. I will start with some of the good. 
Uh, we had a, a great bill uh, that started out Representative Matt Wilhite, a, a Democrat out of uh, you know, the, the east coast of Florida. He's a firefighter by, by day, by, you know, because we're part-time legislators, so we all have normal jobs. Um, he had a great bill to cover uh, job-related cancers that really only firefighters get. Okay. And right toward the end of session, we were able to get that bill uh, brought up as a, as a committee bill in the State Affairs Committee on which, which I sit. Um, just went through unanimously there. The next day was on the floor of the House. Uh, and <laughs> I'm not kidding. There was not a dry eye wow. on, the, on the House because, uh, you know, anytime you're talking about a bill, you know, people will come, you know, talk and debate. It affects lives. It really, really does. And there are so many members that that have family, you know, members of the, of the house that have family members that are first responders or are first responders used to be. So, uh, and a lot of firefighters, uh, uh, you know, were in the in the gallery on that day to to hear the bill and to okay. watch the vote. Uh, and it went through it went through unanimously, which was fantastic. Wow. Went through unanimously in the Senate, and the governor signed it into law. Uh, it's a great, great bill because I mean, not just with first responders, but you know, veterans, especially. You know, I'm I'm a veteran. We have to do a, a better job of taking care of of those who take care of us. That's right. And that was a really great example of both sides of the aisle getting together to to work on a really important piece of legislation that was going to have a huge effect on on people's lives. So uh, that was a great, great moment, a great day in the house. I even still get a little little misty oh, even thinking about wow. it. Wow, sweet. It was a good one. Unfortunately, um, that we, we would call that a rarity. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, uh, looking at looking at the stats, there's there's quite a few bills that uh, that go through unanimously or nearly unanimously. Okay. So I'm there's wrong, quite man. a bit of of across the aisle, but you know that's that's the good stuff. You know, like taking care of firefighters or or some of the more more uh, common sense stuff. You know, like the the texting while driving. Yeah, right. you know, yes. most states have gone full wireless or you know full handheld uh, prohibitions, making it a, a a primary offense. You know, and okay. we went through the same process in the '90s when uh, there was a law passed that you had to wear a seatbelt. Right. You know, and at the time it was actually a little bit of a, a controversial bill, but now it's it makes sense. It's yes. commonplace. Everyone's like, yeah, of course, and you know, it wear saves a seat lives. And it saves lives. Mm -hmm. And the same thing with texting while driving. Uh, studies have shown that that it is a major cause of, of accidents and distracted driving, and we were finally able. It, it had been proposed in the in the House a couple of years, and it had failed. Uh, but we were finally able to get it through and signed by the governor this year. So that was another great bipartisan uh, push to do something that that's good for all of Florida. Uh, but then there were some of the the not so great things. Um, you know, I'm sure a lot of the people listening know about Amendment Four. You know the reenfranchisement for. of, of, uh, of nonviolent felons uh, to get their right to vote back. You know, until last year, there were, we, Florida was one of only four states in the entire country that permanently removed a felon's right to vote for life. And the only way you can get it back was to go before the governor, right? And right. And Governor Scott did not do a lot of those uh, those clemency boards, so it was really, really, basically impossible to get your right to vote back. And you know, with with the felony threshold, like felony theft, we luckily we were able to change it this year. But it, before it was three hundred dollars, and that law was passed in nineteen eighty six. So yeah. anything over three hundred dollars is a felony you theft. Would be a felon. Yeah, we were able to life. raise that. Yeah, this this year. But at the time, yeah, you'd be a felon for life. So if you're a kid and you you stolen a cell know, phone, a, a, an expensive pair of sneakers, right. you're now a felon for life, and you can never vote, wow. which is pretty pretty ridiculous. It's horrendous. And, Nearly the entire country, 46 other states, had already fixed this. Um, and a bill had been proposed six straight years in the state house by a, a Democratic representative. Uh, it had never got it in a single committee hearing, not once. Why? Um, Why do you think that is? Why is Flor Florida shutting down on this, was, was shutting down on this bill? And it continues not to honor it in any way. It's 67% it's it, of voters 64, want... 64%, yeah. Well, let's talk about passed. the numbers in Tallahassee. How many Republicans do we well, have? Well, let him explain <laughs> this why is a reason. you think. This is a reason why you yeah. think it didn't happen. Well, really, that's that's what it boils that's down it. to. That's so, just it. Uh, yeah, not not a single committee hearing for this for this bill. So the voters who wanted this took the matter into their own hands. Did a, a citizen uh, initiated constitutional amendment? Did the work, Damon. I forgot his name. The one who started it. He was an attorney and, mm -hmm. and he could not practice. His name will come to me. Yeah. He started the, the new uh, initiative. And, right. But we got this they got this passed at about 64%. So almost two out of three Floridians. And as elected officials, 
we're representatives. We're supposed to represent the people. When two thirds of the people want something, it is not just our job, but it's it's our obligation. It's our responsibility to carry out the will of the voters. Instead, you know, people always say there's there's no good amendment that the voters pass that won't get messed up when the legislators get their hands on oh it. My God. Oh, and it, it's that's true. Awful. And they did a real fine job of messing this one up. Yeah, they yeah. tore it apart. <laughs> Basically, uh, they added fines and fees to the term of service that are non-judicial fines and fees. So uh, even the staff analysis of the bill, you know, would say if you were if you incurred medical costs while you were incarcerated, you have to pay those back before you're able to. Uh, to register to vote. And there are some studies, I think it said about 80 to 83% of felons would not be eligible to, to be re-enfranchised. This was the group we were trying to get the, the vote back. Um, yeah, it was uh, lightly disguised as a poll tax too. People were going, like you're, you're making people pay to vote. That's illegal. Can you imagine if they said, well, if you owe taxes, you can't vote? We still haven't seen the president's taxes. I mean, right? Yeah, we still haven't seen the president's taxes. <gasps> I mean, really, they, it's, it's outrageous. That's yeah. horrible. But uh, we, you know, we debated that bill. We questioned that bill, and we debated that bill on the floor, uh, hours and hours and wow. hours. And that vote went straight down. Thank you straight for down party you, line for trying. And we we try. And there were several bills like that. Uh, you know, the sanctuary cities bill, which you know, we have no sanctuary cities in Florida, but there is a, a very aggressive, aggressive bill. Uh, it's for division. Yeah, basically federalizing yeah. local agencies. We argued and, and questioned and and debated that bill hours and hours and hours. Oh, wow. Uh, two or three times because it bounced back and forth Just between the House the and the base, Senate. Just to mm-hmm. make people come out to vote. And then it went straight down, straight down party lines. Um, so are we now a sanctuary state? What is, what does that mean? Uh, well, what that law does is it compels uh, local and state agencies to cooperate with ICE uh, anytime they have an interaction with with uh, an undocumented immigrant that may have uh, some issues with the law. Okay. So so they have to automatically report that person, no matter what the reason. Broken tail light. Um, I think it has to be a, a felony issue. Okay. Okay. Uh, I I don't I don't want to speak okay. too too out of too out of place. I think it sure. has to be a felony issue. But uh, regardless, that's that's not that that's not American. Right. You know, we were we were built by by immigrants. You know, if a law like this had been in place when my family came here in the late eighteen hundreds. We, I wouldn't be an American, you know, uh, and I don't know how many. I'm a many. first generation. Yeah. My father came from John F. Kennedy Airport mm-hmm. in yep. New York. So, And uh, all my relatives on my father's side came in uh, through Ellis Island. My grandmother came in from the Mexican Revolution on a train legally to the country and still struggled, you know, as a 14-year-old woman who didn't speak English and her whole family was kit and caboodle and she... Uh, she started sweeping up hair salon scraps of hair and mixing dyes. And uh, eventually, by the time she was 19, she ended up owning her own salon. She bought it with another one of the employees and had a vibrant business. See, and that's She's what an America was built on. Story. All my family members yeah. are. Yeah, is that initiative of somebody really striving for yeah. for the American dream and having that opportunity. And and I'm afraid that some of these laws we're passing out of, out of fear and out of, you know, just political propaganda are, are are taking that away from things like people they're who rapists it. they're bringing drugs i mean still the majority of people come for one reason a job yeah a job and they and they work there's a an interesting meme going on facebook it says if these people are freeloaders how come when they're arrested they're on jobs <laughs> that's right and that's right. The second meme says, how come the guy who hired them without documentation isn't being arrested? That's a felony offense. It's a misdemeanor to get a job without documentation. I hope this is true. I, 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 I haven't know. researched yeah. it, yeah, but, but it sounds right to me. Yeah, but you know why? They can deport you. That's right. the problem. But you get the point. <laughs> the, <laughs> the guy hiring them, who's actually right. felonious, is not being arrested. Yeah, and we had, you know, we... we we put forth uh, amendments to that bill, even common sense amendments. Again, I'm, I'm a veteran. Uh, until I think the late '90s, you could join the military as and yes. you know, not as a citizen to be to enlist in the military, correct? Serve in the military, and then once they got out, there's still cases happening of uh, people who fought in Vietnam, who fought in the first Gulf deported. War, getting deported. Yep. And you know, we put over well over a hundred amendments to try to at least mitigate uh, a bill like this. Not a single one was accepted well i I Uh, think i think that trump has made it clear excuse me that he doesn't really want brown people here that's his their first initiative is to get as many black and brown people 
deported. And I think he's made it clear he doesn't really like s whole countries. Yeah, that's it's a it's a horrible agenda. He Getting, likes Norway. <laughs> well, we can never mind. Uh, I'll be nice to the Norwegians. No offense. So, getting back to you and and Tallahassee, tell me about I call it the highway to hell. The 300 miles of toll roads heading into Georgia through um, lands that have been deemed safe for animals, waterways. I mean, destroying like a, a giant gash. Destructive gash going through our state to Georgia. Yeah, well, and it term it will it'll terminate at the state line. There's not even anything in Georgia it's gonna it, gonna connect to. And Georgia didn't even know we were coming. Yeah. <laughs> they didn't. They were like, "What are you talking about?" Uh, <laughs> Somebody's I'll, gonna make money on it. That's what they're well, talking not about. Not Georgia. <laughs> All I know on that one is, uh, you know, looking at the environmental impact and the need uh, and and uh, the input from the, the the transportation departments. I voted no on that bill. Um, that and the one, outcome was uh, it, it passed uh, nearly straight party line. There were some defectors, I think, on either side. Okay. Um, but it, it's a, a it was a pet project of of a member, uh, and just for political reasons or, or whatever reason, um, you know, again that that went through. You know, right now there are out of 120 members of the Florida House, there are 73 Republicans, only 47 Democrats. Even though there are more registered Democrats in the state of Florida. So, so why is that happening? We have more Democrats, registered Democrats in Florida, but they're not holding office positions. Uh, well, we have a lot of, you know, independent voters. It's something like 23, 25 percent are independent. And so, you know, they get swayed, which, which either way, which obviously, you know, any, any way they choose, just sure. like any Republican or Democrat sure. can vote any way they want. Um, but, you know, how the, the districts are drawn has a big effect, you know. If you Gerrymandering. At, if you look at, at my district, for example, a lot of the the neighborhoods in Progress Village are cut out of it. Wow. You know, and they're put into uh to state rep Diane Hart's district. Um, you know, if they just drawn a straight line instead of cutting out those those communities, my district probably would have gone blue. Eight Something years very ago. similar is happening with the Board of County Commission. So we end up with one African American representative every time, because that's the black seat. And that's the only one that's that's the only one the black person can win usually. And, and that's why, especially in the 2020 election, not just for national implications but for state implications, we need to get as many people out to vote as possible, educated and out to vote, because the census happens in 2020. Yeah. And that means right after that, they redraw all the the the, the district state lines, yeah. lines and the Senate lines and the congressional lines in Florida, and the more voices. That the more balanced it is in Tallahassee, if it was 60-60, you know, half and half, that would be perfect. Because that, that would give us the most fair initial draw of the districts. Okay. You know, we have a fair district amendment in Florida. Every time that, that we've redrawn these districts since then, which I think it's only been, been once or twice. But it goes to the courts to, to get redrawn. Mm-hmm. But our, our courts have been, you know, it, it, it's hard to, you know, the courts are supposed <laughs> to be as impartial as possible. And I know they, they do a good job but sometimes it's hard you know and, and then you'll get districts that are very unusual so we and need we need more to get people, people out, out mm -hmm. during the midterms that's <laughs> yep. when a lot of crazy crazy people yep. get in I yeah mean, if it was me i would just draw a bunch of squares say those are our districts but uh unfortunately, right. that's, make it fair that's not what happens yeah you can if you look at ever look at a map you can see that it's pretty jagged mm -hmm. <laughs> it's not straight lines yeah that needs to end <laughs> gerrymandering so we're gonna well, be going to break and when we come back, I'd love to talk about um, some of the seats that we can flip, including Russ Spano. My name is Gil Sampson. I didn't come from a very rich family, and so paying for college would have been very tough. I don't know if I would have been able to go to the college that I went to, and then I don't know if I would have gotten into the career that I am in. So I think Bright Futures has done a lot to shape my life. I uh, got a job as a structural engineer, and I design residential buildings, commercial buildings all over the United States. Because of Bright Futures, I was able to go to college. You know, so many kids just don't even ever get that opportunity. And to be able to do it and not have any debt when I graduated is amazing. And it was all thanks to Bright Futures. 
Florida has created more than 1 million jobs in only five years, and a great education connects our students to these exciting opportunities. That's why the Florida Lottery has funded Bright Futures Scholarships to help over 725,000 students attend college. Because every play is for education. The Florida Lottery. Just imagine. Hey, this is A.J. Wright, better known as Mr. Clean. You looking for some great barbecues? Come see them two brothers in the grill. Located at 423 Virginia Street, Charleston, West Virginia. We got ribs, chicken, pulled pork, brisket, collard greens, mac and cheese, baby. Come get some. And get you a nice, smooth cigar. 304-550-4431. That is 304-550-4431. Come get some, baby. The rib man, mama, the rib man. In Touch Radio. We're back. And boy, do we have an interesting conversation going on with one of our state reps, <laughs> Mr. Hattisley. Now, you know what? Um, we really want to give people solutions. And one of the things they can do is they can be vigilant and, and figure out who their state rep is, what seats, what seats are flippable, so any information you can give us regarding that, first we want to talk about your seat and what you're up to. And then if you know of any seats you think can actually be flipped, because we have people out there who really want to be active. Mm -hmm. uh, well, we can definitely start with that. Uh, so my state house seat, state house district 59, um, you know, it's, it's finally blue and uh, we're pretty sure we're going to keep it blue here great, in 2020. Great. But we have some really good targeted seats that we want to flip. So you know uh, what, can we go over that district a little bit and again, where that encompasses and why you think it's going to remain blue if you have a candidate in mind? Well, that, that's going to get into the whole other, uh, whole other okay. topic. Yeah. <laughs> oh. <clears throat> so again, it's Brandon, Valrico, Riverview, parts of Bloomingdale, Sefner, Dover, um, some of Claremel City and, and some of Progress Village. Okay. Now, one of the, the things going into the 2018 election that uh, we were really focused on is even since the presidential year in 2016, more younger people have been moving to that district. Oh, that's that's And promising. so you that saw the, the registered voter shift. It used to be primarily Republican. And then on election day, 2018, there were 5,099 more registered Democrats in that district. Wow. And even since then, we've gained another four or 500. Okay. So the district is trending blue. Good. So as long as we do a good job higher up on the ticket, then people will just keep, as long as they keep voting down ballot, then I think we're, we have a good chance of, uh, of flipping this one. And another good part is, you know, there's the, there's going to be the presidential on the ballot. There's going to be Congress on the ballot. And then it's going to get into the state, the state house races, state Senate and state house. It's much higher on the ballot than it was last time. Okay, good. We don't have governor. We don't have a senator. We don't have all the, the cabinet members. So it'll be much higher and more visible on the ballot, which will be great. Um, so if we keep trending, getting more and more registered Democrats and excited Democrats, in that district, I think that one's going to stay blue. Okay. So there are some other districts just north of that. So uh, the Temple Terrace, Plant City area, House District 58. Uh, we're, we're, we've almost got them locked down, but we have a, a potentially exciting candidate who will hopefully, again, be announcing relatively soon okay. to, to do a challenge there. Um, but Challenging again, who? Uh, Lawrence McClure. Okay. Uh, and there are several other, other Democrats in the Hillsborough County area. Um, statewide, we have... There were nine seats that were within only three points, 3% in the 2018 election. Democrats lost two seats by less than 50 votes each. Wow. Yeah, and one seat by only 400 votes. Wow. Wow. We are wow. Targeting Very close. Those, those seats with, with laser focus. So uh, we really do Your have a hope. Your vote counts out there. Mm -hmm. they, they count. If, ever, if ever, anyone ever says, oh, you know, it doesn't matter if I vote, it doesn't count. One of those seats was lost by 32 votes. Wow. 32 votes. That's you and your family. Yeah. <laughs> it's a couple Extended of your family. friends on the Extended block family. that, that you know yeah. that don't typically vote sure. in a midterm. Bring them on out and that flips that flips that whole election. You know, um, statewide, there are over 6 million votes cast and uh, Bill Nelson lost the Senate by less than 10,000 votes. Yeah. You know, so your vote does matter. It 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 matters more than you know. Um, but I don't know if you want to get into the, the fun news... Sure. Yes. Bring us so, fun news all right. The fun news. Uh, three weeks ago, um, instead of running for the state house uh, again, which you know I will be going up to Tallahassee for the 2020 session to to finish out my term, but instead I'm going to be challenging Ross Spano for Congress in the congressional 15th district. That's exciting. Awesome. Woo, woo, woo. 
Yeah, thank you. you know, we're we're very excited. Um, you know, as as a veteran, as I, I think I mentioned. Give oh, you hey, applause for that. <laughs> Our audience is slow. <laughs> <laughs> you know, as, as a veteran, um, you know, someone w- with without a, a big political background, I think people are ready to have someone willing to listen to everyone in the district instead of just the people who agree with me. You know, to go up and represent everyone instead of just representing themselves. You know, I heard this guy, Ross Spano, says uh, think people think of him as an idiot because he's a climate denier. <laughs> Why would anybody think that? Well, <laughs> a couple of weeks ago, he was on TV and someone asked him about, about climate change and his response was that he did not think it's it's man-made and doesn't doesn't listen to the 98% of scientists that, that say it's it's an issue. Now, I'm... I'm, you know, you one, know in I, Florida, I'm that's a, a problem. That's a big problem. We're hey, going to be affected. Hey, you're a rocket scientist. I would assume you know better <laughs> well, than see, that. That's, that's, a, that's one of the things. You know, I'm, I'm an engineer. Exactly. So I look at data. I look yes. at information. And when people smarter than me are saying this is going on and 98% of them agree. Sure. Then I'm going to believe them and look at the data myself. You know, I'm also a veteran. The Pentagon says that climate change is the number one threat to our national security in the next 50 years. Wow. I listen when the Pentagon makes Absolutely. makes a statement like that. Yep. We need a planet, no matter what your issue. We really do. need a planet. And you know, logic and facts are important, and we need to be making decisions on logic and facts, not based on what your party leadership is telling and you. And you know, when I gr- when I was growing up, it was all about clean air. Yeah. So even if you just want clean air, sure. <laughs> and let's let's talk about that if you don't want to talk about the climate. But uh, this is a, an important issue, and in Florida, we don't want to be flooded out. No, yeah. Our, <laughs> tourism is our our number one industry, I know. you know, and having an effect like that, not only would it affect our, our, our pockets, you know, our wallets, but it would affect our, our Florida way of life. You know, you want Absolutely. Bayshore Boulevard, those nice walks that you can take down and look at the dolphins at sunset. You want that st- still to be there. You know, we get a little bit more sea level rise. It's gone. It's gone. Um, They're having problems in Miami already. Oh, yeah. Oh, yes. That's, that's awful in Miami. Big time. Um, District 15, Ross Banner, where is that? Where does that break so off? So it's the northeastern part of Hillsborough County. So my state house district uh, is almost entirely in the congressional 15th, and we make up about a quarter of the overall voters. So again, Brandon, Riverview, Valrico. So that is the con- congressional 15th. Well, I'm in the state house 59th, but right. we are within the congressional you're 15th. Within. Yep. Okay. And then so it goes it's, up and it's an f- area you're real familiar with. Mm-hmm. Folks you're yep. familiar with, issues you're familiar with. Yep. We also get uh, Temple Terrace, Plant City, yep. those parts of kind of northeast Tampa. It goes into uh, Polk County and Lakeland. Wow. And that uh, goes all the way up to the southern part of Lake County in Claremont. Wow, that's a lot. Mm-hmm. That is huge. It's a big, big district. Yeah. Yep, yep. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, but we're, uh, we're excited. You know, we have a. Uh, our, our grassroots effort, just like last time, getting out there, being visible, uh, already 16 months out, 15 months out, you know, going on, on radio shows and podcasts and being uh, available in the public and going to events and ta- having town halls. You know, that's something that, that we haven't gotten. You know, um, at, as a state rep, when constituents call our office with a, an issue that we have to go to, to a federal you know, legislator for, I've stopped going to Ross Spano because he would not return any of our calls or messages. So now I go to Kathy Castor because her staff has been responsive, you know, and we're able to serve our our constituents like we need to. Um, But that's one of the other reasons that I'm running is I I can't find him. Do you, what do you think about that area that you're going to be running for, for um, the Ross Spano seat? Uh, Lakeland, uh, Winter Haven, that area there. Talk, talk to me about it. What do you think the specific needs are? There's lots of farms. There's lots of rural land. Mm-hmm. They strike me as having different needs than uh, the folks sitting in South in Tampa. Temple Terrace. Yeah, or Temple yep. Terrace. Yeah, good point. Yeah, well, uh, you know, health care is a big one. You know, having accessible, affordable health care is always important. And you, know, you mentioned you know, farms and farms, jobs. Yeah. Th- those are, are going to be critical. You know, uh, there were a lot of promises made in the, not just in the 2016 election, but the 2018 election about the economy and about jobs. And, and none of them have, have really followed through. You know, the, the IRS just reported this week that they, they uh, took in taxes $93 billion more from individual <sighs> citizens, yep. which just about covers the $90 billion corporate tax cut. So individuals are paying that price and instead of being able to, to put that money back into their small businesses, back into their farms, back into their, their investments or whatever, it's, it's going to, uh, to cover the corporate tax cut. And, and people are upset. I mean, not only that. And rightly so. Rightly yeah. so. 
not only that, uh, you know, there have been a lot of other issues going on with with Congressman Spano, and I really think that people are ready for for someone uh, to listen to everybody. He had a little everybody. campaign finance issue, didn't he? He he has. Uh, there are some some uh, FEC complaints uh, right now, and some Office of Congressional Ethics complaints. It's been in the the, the newspaper and the Tampa Bay Times. It's made made a lot of national news um, of taking a lot of illegal campaign contributions. Um, now, what makes a campaign contribution illegal? So there are federal limits on how much you can give per person, right? Okay. And uh, I believe his situation, he took vastly more than the limit. Like as 180000 As personal loans. And then he gave that money to his campaign, which the FEC is, they know that that's, that's a, kind of a see-through way of just letting somebody donate now, more to your campaign. Now, he almost wasn't seated. That's true. There were uh, two members. I, uh, I think North Carolina had had another member um, that right after the election he was almost not seated in Congress based on these these campaign finance issues, which came out right after the election. Okay, yeah, but so, he's uh, still there. Well, <laughs> you know, the the Secretary of State of Florida certified the election the day after, which exactly following procedure because yeah. these these things had not come out. So the Secretary of State did their yeah, did, did they their did job their exactly diligence. as they're supposed to. Yeah. Um, but since our election was certified, uh, mm. there was really no way not to seat him in Congress. Where North Carolina, right. the election was not certified, so but, that's why he was not But when these seated. indiscretions like uh, the financing come up, it takes two, three, four years. You know, by the time they even figure it out, if they even figure it out, there just doesn't seem to be any restitution. Uh, well, we'll see what happens. Very little. You know, um, we're just reading what everybody else is reading yeah. in, the, in the paper, and you know, we just really got to focus on what we have to do to show that that. We, we can do better in Congress, that we can have somebody with a little more, you know, a, bringing honesty and you integrity. Say it, yeah, the back, I word, integrity, <laughs> honesty. Back to Congress, you know, having yeah. somebody there to represent represent the, the district and not himself. I mean, that's one thing I can say is I will not take illegal contributions simply to win. I would rather lose. Well, at, and an interesting point, how much did it cost you to run for your office? And you <laughs> you, you have a record as the least... Yeah. spent money to get this it might seat. be it might be a record as the uh, the sitting state representative yes um i think i raised the, the least amount of any of any winner um but it really goes to show that if your message is there and, and the grassroots effort if you're out there so you raised about done. seventy-eight thousand, right? about seventy-eight thousand yeah. last year yeah. and your opponent um who did you run against again uh by the end uh, a guy named joe wicker on the Republican side. Mm -hmm. Okay. And, and he raised uh, just under a quarter million, I think. Wow. So on the hard dollar side, we were outspent about three to one. Uh, but really, it just goes to show that, uh, you know, having that, that message and having, you know, having the, the right, I guess, I'll, I'll say moral compass to, yeah. to yes. be able to have the, the courage to, to, to buck your party if you have to. Money doesn't buy uh, everything. <laughs> yeah. Then it, it, res it really resonates with But, you know, it's voters. amazing how savvy the voters are out there. They can tell a good person when they see one. Sure. Yeah. How much is it going to cost you to run for the seat? Uh, you know, obviously it's going to going to be What's the a bit more expensive. You know, it really varies based on on the the area. Uh, as long as we just focus on getting out there and, and getting the attention, and, you know, uh, and, and getting that grassroots effort. Then that that's what's going to be important. That's now, really somebody what we're need. wanted to contribute. How could they do that's that? That's a great question. I'm glad you asked. There's a wonderful website. It's HattersleyForCongress.com. Okay, yeah. spell that Hattersley for us. H a t t e r s l e y, and then the word for f o r for Congress. HattersleyForCongress.com. Uh, yeah, there's a big contribute button. You know, we just kicked off the campaign three weeks ago. Wow. Uh, you know, so it's just kind of my bio and a little bit why we're running. Uh, we're going to start adding issues and adding events. And, you know, there's a, a button to, to get on our email list or to join the campaign as a volunteer. And, of course, yeah, we hope to see you in button. Temple Terrace, which we're sitting very close to right now. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh yeah, we we've been up to uh to Claremont already about an hour 45 minute drive. Have, that's been a been big to working yeah. class African American mm -hmm. community for years. Yes. We love yep. Claremont. Yes. Yep, mm -hmm. so we uh, we've already been going all over the district and we're going to keep doing that all the way through uh, through election day and beyond. You mentioned okay. issues. What what is your platform right now if I was going to vote for you? I've never seen you, never heard of you, Matt. Yeah, I'm sitting out there don't know you. What is your platform? Well, uh, some of it we've already we've already talked about. Right, but I mean, you know, punch so, it out. So I'm I'm a veteran, and we're ready to to put. Oh, oh wait, oh, do we wait. have? This will be great when we come okay. back. I It'll just, be great. <laughs> that's okay. Um, so when good. we get Lost back, we'll discuss what your platform is. Perfect. <laughs> Walters Academy for Entrepreneurs.
entrepreneurship, a place that we like to call The Way, where we're educating today's youthpreneurs to be tomorrow's billionaires through social entrepreneurship. Do you have a student who's bored, frustrated, gifted, inquisitive, creative, business-minded? Then maybe you need to check The Way out. Listen, we have an educational platform that allows for individualized instruction. It's strength-based project-based and designed to help your students become the absolute best they can while starting their own business and being an entrepreneur. If you're looking for something different and you need to find a more excellent way, then you need to visit us at The Way. That's The Way, www.thewaetampa.org. Or you can call us at 813-603-7923. We look forward to showing your students a more excellent way at The Way. Hi, I'm Donald L. Dowers Jr., your motivational guru. This is the DLD Motivational Moment. One darn second. America since 2017 is suffering from a serious hiccup. 9-11 is seriously overused in a distasteful manner. Every day the cops are calling on an innocent, innocent person of color. It amazes me that America has come down to this. A person of color becomes a person of interest. Waffle House, the dorm, Starbucks is a few. This is not the lunch counters, sit-ins of the 1960s. 2019, harassed simply for being black and proud. Hold on one darn second. This has been the DLD Motivational Moment. Pre-order my new book, Motivational Moments, at DLD28-2002 at yahoo.com or 813-394-5875. Touch Radio is smooth soul. Rocking your radio on the sounds of soul. Playing your favorite R&B in Touch Radio. Here we are, back again. And our time with uh, Representative Adam Hansley is going quickly. It's flying by. Lots yes. of issues, lots of interesting things. Glad to have you on the show. Thank you again. Thanks for having us. So, okay, tell us your platform again. Yeah, we left <laughs> We left you in the lurch. Unfortunately, <laughs> we, we went to the, the spot. I jumped the gun the last time. Um, give me 10 things you are adamant about changing five, or fixing. <laughs> 10. 10 is good. I like that. Uh, well, <laughs> health care is extremely important. Having a, a solid solution for affordable and accessible health care that's not going to break somebody's wallet. Um, that, that gets the politics out of it, so it's just a solution. So healthcare is a big one. Uh, small business economic development, not just for, you know, well, for obviously for everybody, but especially focusing on on some minority communities. Um, and just so you know, we're sitting at the Tampa Hillsborough Action Plan, also know it that, uh, 5508. We have, this is a um, small business incubator. Mm-hmm. For Hillsborough Tampa. County. Yeah, so come on down and uh, support our small business owners. Mm-hmm. And being able to to remove some of the the roadblocks to starting a small business. When I started ours, you know, every day was running into a new thing that we didn't know about. That mm-hmm. you know, the chambers of commerce have great great uh, resources to be able to, to to navigate that. Yep. But we have to know. About, I didn't even know about it. So being able to to just clear some of those roadblocks. Um, I was you know, it's one of the only only three veterans in the Democratic caucus up there. I was kind of the, the Democratic veteran issue guy. Okay. You know, so again, taking care of those who, who have taken care of us is extremely important to me. You know, I had a, a veterans suicide prevention and mental health bill, uh, a veterans higher education bill to help help vets get, get out of college faster and we into the workforce. Um, and we're running them all again this year. Good, uh, good so, for you. So those, those are important. Support of the LB. GT community. Yeah, right? that's really actually the reason I got into the race in 2018. Uh, but the first bill I filed this year, you know, there, there's an unconstitutional passage in Florida statutes. It's it's called DOMA or the Defense of Marriage Act that says the state will only recognize marriage between a man and a woman. Uh, we had a, a, a bill to, to repeal that uh, last year, and it didn't even get a, a committee hearing. It's very disappointing. Um, but that that has been ruled unconstitutional. So it's just excess obsolete language and statute. I don't see why we should have it in there. So I've already filed a bill to, to repeal that again. Um, you know, I was one of the early co- uh, co-sponsors of the Competitive Workforce Act. Right now, 54 counties out of 67 in Florida, you can still be fired or evicted from your house simply for being gay. Wow. Wow. What about know, affordable um, housing? Affordable housing, uh, that was one of the issues that, that we ran on. Um, you know, the the Sadowski affordable, you know, the, the, the trust the fund, fund, yeah, which that's again being... was swept... Uh, this year in Tallahassee, you know, they, they took a large chunk to uh, 
to help the areas affected by Hurricane Michael, which is great. Right. But Pensacola. the rest of the state got zero. Wow. Um, uh, just to let listeners know, the Sadowski Fund is um, funded by um, taxes that you pay when a, a property closes. Uh, so there's a, a set amount of funds that go into that that go up to the Tallahassee, which was assigned for affordable housing. However, it seems like every session they find another every reason year, to yeah. take from it. Yeah, from it. it's emptying it out, no, emptying mm-hmm. the coffers. Yeah, absolutely. Yep. Fighting for uh, for public education was another big issue that we ran on. That I'll continue to fight for. Uh, teachers in Florida are paid near the bottom of the of the country. Um, They're like forty seven. We're like forty seven, yeah. forty six or forty seventh. Uh, we have, I think the Tampa Bay Times reported, I'm not sure on the number, around 3,000 open teacher positions across the state of Florida, and school just started. You know, So um, being able to, to attract quality teachers and, and keep, keep them here keep them, yeah. uh, is extremely important. You know, um, So education is a big one. You know, Over 90%, about 90% of our kids go to public, public schools, uh, but more of our funding has been going to charter schools. Right. We're going to do a show about this mm-hmm. next week. Yeah, um, there's something in Tallahassee. It's called Pico Dollars, Public Education Capital Outlay. Okay. So anytime you know, uh, you need to fix the air conditioners of a school or build a new, uh, you know, a disability access ramp. Mm-hmm. That that usually comes out of Pico Pico mm-hmm. Dollars, big maintenance projects, big I capital see. projects. Right. Uh, charter schools got 158 million dollars of Pico Dollars this past in this past budget. Public schools across the state zero. Wow. Really? wow! 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 Zero dollars. That's shocking. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we're going to hear about it next week. So, what are some other things, and then we'll let you uh, move on to Angela's questions. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, I think so. Those are some of some of our big ones. Um, you gun know, safety. What about gun safety in schools? Um, uh, well, uh, I am the only ground combat veteran in the Florida legislature. Wow! And I argued against arming school teachers. Good. You know, I'm the only one who has the experience of being in a gunfight and, and seeing the, the chaos and confusion that bullets flying at you, what that, what that brings. Yeah. Uh, so I, I know what happens in those situations, but someone who's not trained in firearms and, you know, the 144 hour class with only eight hours of hands on training is mm-hmm. nowhere near enough to be unsupervised at the, the firing range, let alone with a, a weapon around, child, around children. Um, so I was. We've had very, one go off by accident already. The day we were arguing that bill, that happened. Yep. Wow. That was uh, in, in Wesley Chapel. A school resource officer had a, a negligent discharge in the cafeteria of a school. Yep. That was happening while we were debating that bill. Wow. So imagine if you did that in every school. And do you know what the response was what? when we brought that up? Oh, we're talking about arming guardians and teachers. That was a school resource officer. It's not the same. Where a school resource officer is. It is supposed to be vastly more trained and comfortable well, with a firearm. Well, wait a minute. We Bad saw, argument. Well, horrible argument. We we saw what happened in Parkland when that guy hightailed it. The SROs. That guy is 32 years on the force and was arguably one of the most well-trained SROs in the state of Florida. And he ran and hid while the kids were Well, you know, even the police are outgunned now. Yeah. I mean, you coming up against a, a long rifle with a big magazine. I mean, yeah. I'm, fr- I'm afraid for the cops. And that's why we have common sense gun laws. I went with uh, Mothers well, we need to Demand push for Action. More well, that's, gun laws. excuse me. That's why we need them. Thank you. Uh, Mothers Demand Action. We saw you in Tallahassee. Yeah. Uh, well, last year, maybe what, three, four, five hundred oh, easy. Uh, moms, you know, in, in the red shirts came up and met with legislators. Uh, it, was, it was actually a really, really kind of great, great fun day. Um, but yeah, just some of those common sense things. Like, for example, uh, actually, just yesterday, uh, around 30, well, they needed at least 32, and we got. Well, more than that, legislators, we all filed a, a special letter to the Secretary of State asking for a special session to discuss uh, and try to take action on the gun violence epidemic. Wow. Congratulations. Thank, Thank you. you for doing that. Uh, and Thank you for doing that. So now the, the Secretary of State has to poll all legislators. And if at least 60 percent say, yes, we want the special session, then, then it will oh, happen. Really? But, but we only we make up 40 percent. Yeah, so yet. But so we're we're trying, and okay. these are things that if you look at the the numbers, the vast majority of not just Floridians but people all across the country want. Well, I've said it before: universal bull, background bull, checks. Bullets aren't partisan. They're bullets not. Bullets aren't partisan. If you're voting to let people sh- shoot willy nilly, you're going to be the next victim. I mean, your kid's going to be the next victim. Your wife, your son, you. Yeah, I, mean, I mean, it's I, ridiculous. I am a gun owner. It's a nonpartisan you know, and, issue. It and is. I am for safe and responsible 
gun ownership. Like well, that's you what own. common sense gun laws yeah, are checks. Exactly. And background you, checks. The no. vast majority of, uh, of, the floor, of Florida supports universal background checks. That, that's an easy one. Low-hanging fruit, but it won't even be heard. And guess what? Other com- uh, countries have mental illness. Other countries have video games, but we just have an inordinate access to guns. Well, there are now more guns than people in, in the United, United States. States of America. Can you imagine that? More guns than people. Wow. So I don't have a gun, but the guy next door has seven. You know? I mean, he's got one for me. <laughs> that's right. Yeah, but it's really, it's common sense things that it just takes a little bit of compromise. You know, that's one of the other reasons I'm, I'm running to go to Washington is we've lost that compromise. There are a, a large group of of young, new new leaders up there, a lot of them are veterans, who are up there to, to break that mold, to be able to sit down and compromise and talk with, even even talk with somebody from the opposite party. You know, I think, I always think a good compromise is when everyone leaves the table a little bit grumpy. Like, right, I got right. some of what I got, but yeah. not everything. I had to give sure. a little bit. And we, we've lost that. It's either 100% my way or nothing. Yeah. Quick question, and, do you, how do you feel about gun buybacks? Um, I haven't read about it a whole okay. lot. I know uh, it worked in Australia after the Port Arthur massacre in, I want to say, 1996. It showed okay. uh, a lot of success. It's been but, done locally here, too, yeah. as well, yes, by our yes, police department. Yes. But uh, I really don't know a whole lot about it locally. So. Well, basically, you know, money or that, that gun that's mm-hmm. doing nothing for you. Some people yeah. might make the decision, I need some money. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> money yeah. works. Yeah. So what, what else is on the horizon for you as far as um, getting started? I mean, it's been three weeks since you announced. Where do you go now? What do you do now? Uh, well, we've done, actually, we've uh, done a lot in the newspaper. We've already been on, on TV once or twice. We're going to so yeah. uh, ad campaigns, media campaigns. Yep, blitzes. we've already started the, the social media ad campaigns. We're into the raising money phase. Okay. Um, you know, we're doing a lot of the grassroots and, and outreach until uh, after after session. So I'm going to be in Tallahassee for the legislative session. Uh, that's from January till March this year. And after we come back from session... That's really when a lot the of the, the out, outreach is going to happen. Who is running your campaign? Uh, great, great person. Her name is Erica. She's sitting over here in the corner. Uh, she's helping helping run the campaign. Moved down here from Colorado. Wow! Thank you, Erica. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you know what? You you, you didn't mention teachers. I heard there's some teachers running for office. There are. Um, so uh, in House District 64, Jessica Harrington is a Jessica. teacher. Jessica. She's running. Uh, in Senate District 21, Amanda Linton is a teacher. Okay. So that's uh, the southern part of Hillsborough County and going down into Sarasota and Manatee counties. Okay. Uh, so she's running, and, and we're, we're going to be keeping our eyes out. There might be a few more announcing, hopefully, in the next next few months, some other teachers also running. Good, because teachers are made good, very good candidates, and they understand mm-hmm. the school system. And Hillsborough County has one of the largest school systems and in the nation. it's very messy. Uh, all the stuff that's going on with our school system is very messy. Yeah, Hillsborough it's County, a uh, struggle. I believe, is the third largest school district in Florida and the eighth largest in the United States. Yeah, yeah, it's huge. It's like a city. Yep, and their budget's <laughs> about $3 billion, billion with a B. Yeah. Wow. And we want all of our children to have an opportunity to be successful in life, regardless Absolutely. of their zip code. Exactly. Absolutely. we and got one more minute till our break, so... <laughs> Pardon? Oh, it's yeah. the end already. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> hey, time can you tell us one fun. more time how they can get hold of you? Good job. Yeah. If the, you're having a town hall coming up or anything like yeah, that. Yeah, well, we're having a, an education town hall that's very legislative. Uh, we're still ironing out the details. Probably going to be on September 30th, but we'll be posting about that. We're going to be having a, a transportation town hall. These are all legislative. Um, and then we're going to be uh, starting up some campaign events in September as well. Check us out. Uh, Hattersley for Congress on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, online. And you can follow us and, uh, and learn about all the events that we're doing and, and how to get a hold I of us. I saw Fentress Driscoll going yep. to be attending. I think that's uh, tonight. Fentress is having, Representative Driscoll is okay. having an education town hall. I want to say it's tonight with State Senator Janet Cruz. Okay. Okay. Yeah, we want to get out and meet our representatives. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So and, and help them. Do and something. And help them. You can knock on doors. You can uh, hand out information, and you can show up at events. Yeah, we're already like doing a you. voter registration push right now, and that's going to be continuing all the way through uh, through the spring. And then you we're really going to start, start to talking. Yep. Absolutely, get out there, register. Critical. Hit up HattersleyForCongress.com. and consider being a Democrat if you're an independent, so you can vote in the primaries. <laughs> <Woo-hoo>. <laughs> All right. Thank you so much for joining us. Of course. Thank you for having me on. It's been this great. This has been good. Great All show. All right. Great show. Again, another good show. Thank you. Thank We're you We're going to have you yeah. back after you win. 
I, uh, that, that's a date. <laughs> All right. Book All right. the show now. <laughs>